Ah, this is the life, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel and to Gran Canaria, where we start today's flight. Carrying millions of passengers across the globe each year, Britannia is the world's biggest and Britain's number one holiday airline. For more than three decades, Britannia has built a reputation for innovation, service and quality, which continues to set the standards for holiday airlines. And let's just check we've got everything we need. We've got beer. We've got the complimentary priority pass lunch. Great vistas across the airport runway. Nice hot sunshine. And of course, an impromptu air show by the Spanish Air Force. The Britannia name may be long gone, but the bloodline lives on as direct Britannia descendant, Luton based, TUI Airways Limited. On its way to pick me up today is this remarkable 24 year old Boeing 767 300 extended range aircraft. And I'm really looking forward to this one as the 767 is, in my view, one of the true great commercial airliners of all time. Today's 3 hour and 57 minute flight is on a 24 year old Boeing 767-300, first delivered to Britannia Airways in 1998, and will be cruising at a maximum altitude today of 40,000 feet. And in fact, the last 767 I flew on was the final ever British Airways 767 retirement flight from Larnaca in Cyprus several years ago. So you can understand why I'm excited. Well, some of you will understand that, right? I'm not actually crazy, right? With boarding time upon us, the thronging masses swarmed to the gate area. Well, not all 75 of us on this 328 seat airliner. This should be a very nice, pleasant flight home. I'm hoping for some of that warm Britannia hospitality, and of course, the renowned fact that Britannia was... Get ready for it, ladies and gentlemen. ...the first to offer hot food on holiday flights. So let's just recap as I find my seat, ladies and gentlemen. We're on a Boeing 767, on an airline with pedigree heritage, famed awesome cabin crew that pioneered hot food. What could possibly go wrong? And here's my really roomy extra legroom seat that I paid a small premium for. And I've checked online to make sure that nobody is going to be sat next to me. This really is looking good. The cabin seems nice, although of course the old girl pie today standards looks dated. But getting older and looking dated it's not all that bad, as I say to myself in the mirror, on an almost daily basis. And so, with everyone strapped in, having listened to more than five minutes of a health and safety sermon, it's finally time to push back and take off. As always, I'll be quiet to let you enjoy the sweet sound of these enormously powerful engines.
Dragonborn, there's just time for me to tell you about James, Joe, Kieran, and all of my other Patreon supporters who generously help me to bring you these videos week in, week out. I should point out at this stage, ladies and gentlemen, that upon boarding, we were informed that on today's flight, there would be no hot food available. That, as it would turn out later, was a massive understatement. So don't get too excited in choosing alternatives to hot food like I did. In fact, we might as well just throw this menu card in the bin, as you'll see. So uh, yeah, the Boeing 767, wow. Brings back memories, this aircraft. So why did I specifically want to fly on the 767 this afternoon? Well, the truth is that I flew on a lot of these when I was younger because these were the workhorse of really the long haul leisure industry probably for other airlines as well. Today's aircraft is 24 years old. Um, they are old, you can tell they're old now. Uh, they're past their best. They're certainly not state-of-the-art anymore, but TUI continues to fly. I think they've got two or three of these in the UK fleet, maybe a couple more in the Belgian fleet or wherever else TUI exists in Europe. But yeah, these are the last of the 767s of TUI, uh, which morphed itself, for those who can remember, from what used to be Thompson Fly, before that it was Britannia, and uh, I can't remember what it was before Britannia because I'm, even I'm not an adult, uh, but yeah, so like I say, I remember flying on a lot of these back in the Britannia days, when it was a simple UK leisure airline, and I've flown on a number of these over, the Carib over to the Caribbean, so Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and to some of the other longer haul destinations that Britannia and Thompson used to fly. On today's flight we've got 75 passengers and I think this aircraft seats 270 people, I think, but I'll confirm that. If I said to you, what's the one thing you could improve on any economy? What's the one thing that would make you really happy on a four hour economy flight? What would you say? Would it be free food, perhaps? We used to have free food. I remember getting free food on Britannia, or inclusive food. Or would you say, make the passenger next to you vanish? Perhaps. I think that would be my priority. So if I could have a double seat to myself, always, on every flight. I don't know what my wife would think though, that's the only thing. So it's about five o'clock in the afternoon now, local time. And we are probably about halfway between Canaries and mainland Spain, or actually Portugal, we fly up the Portuguese coast and as you can see it's a bright lovely day, very warm, it feels very warm. In a rather unhappy twist of fate, <laughs> I'm afraid, I have some bad news for you, so uh, I'll get straight to the point. So I'm going to declare this the worst flight I've been on in my adult life. Now, let me tell you why. So, first of all, the food. So when we looked at the menu earlier, uh, I said I'd quite fancy a sandwich. To be fair to Tui, they emailed to say they had no hot food on board. So, no hot food. And I stress that. And that'll be important when I tell you the next bit. So I said to the chap, have you got any sandwiches? And he went, no, we haven't. We've got nothing, basically. And the first to offer hot food on holiday flights. So I said, well, have you got anything savoury at all? Because I don't want just sweet stuff for a four and a half hour flight. And he said, no, we haven't. We've got fruit pastels or Pringles. And that's it. So I was earwigging on somebody's conversation. So, because of the light loads, the crew said, you must sit in your seat whilst the plane takes off because it's been balanced. And I get that, that's fine, that's, I've been on flights before where that happens to save fuel, I guess that's what they do. That's fair enough. So, but they said, once you get into the air, you can choose another seat. So here's just another lie that they just make up, or a shortness of the truth. So some passengers who'd paid to be in row one to pay paid extra uh, to have the extra legroom seat at the front of the plane took the bulkhead seat on the 
Given all that we've seen today, I do wonder if TUI have decided to simply run down the short and mid-haul operation in favour of more profitable long-haul package holidays. I may of course be wide of the mark here, but when your product falls short of the competition on all fronts, it's difficult to see how anyone would willingly fly with TUI UK. When Britannia was around, they didn't have the low-cost airlines to contend with, and I do think this is where TUI has simply struggled to adjust. So with this fabulous sunset in the background, Let's have a look at what I spent on today's flight. With a base fare of £137, plus extra legroom seat, checked bag and a drink, that came to a grand total of £201.80. This is a lot more than I normally pay with other airlines for an equivalent service. However, that said, today's flight was all about the 767. And so, as we come towards the end of today's flight, well, you just have to laugh, really. And put it down to experience. 
I'm just glad that I didn't use Manchester Airport and TUI all in one day. That would be enough to drive you insane. But life goes on, and next week I'll be back in the air as usual. On a happier note, I'll be testing out the Mighty 757 with Jet 2, so stay tuned and thanks for watching. Bye for now. The same goal. That is to ensure that Britannia remains undisputedly Britain's number one holiday airline.